So it's very nice being back uh, at Mordida, and, and like uh, Terry, uh, 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 this is the first time here uh, to uh, Nordida in its uh, new location. Um, and so many of you know I'm from San Diego, but I, I, uh, some of you were concerned whether, I, you know, whether I'd be able to withstand the cold here, but I spent a week visiting my parents in Connecticut where they had a lot of snow, and, and so I'm, I'm, I'm actually... Uh, Right. So I'm going to tell you about some uh, work done uh, in collaboration with uh, Andre Bernabe uh, uh, at Princeton and uh, his uh, excellent postdoc, Ronnie Tomale, um, and which uh, was published in uh, PRL last fall with the, the uh, various uh, uh, other uh, you know, uh, related works uh, um, that I'll, I'll discuss. Uh, as well on uh, quantum entanglement spectra in quantum spin chains. I'm actually going to sort of uh, try to review a little bit about what we know about uh, 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 entanglement, entropy, and entanglement spectra, and then I'll get to the work on spin chains and, and you know, horrible, messy diagrams like this uh, at the end. Uh, so, um, uh, it, the, the, uh, if you're uh, bored, I, you know, I invite you to. Uh, uh, play seminar bingo, um, and, and uh, it's a great day. We play at UCSD, and um, and so you, know, you, can, uh, you, know, you fill out this card and then uh, get it uh, you know, anything in a cross or up and down, and then you shout out bingo, and then you win. <laughs> Prize is free internet. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay, and uh, I should apologize to Terry, who I think you probably heard this talk and asked for once. Uh, 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 so, uh, uh, or at least a so um, what is uh, 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 quantum entanglement? So, uh, so many of you know uh, 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 already. Um, so, you know, if you take a Hilbert space and you uh, part part partition it as some uh, direct product, uh, typically we're talking about a spatial partition. Typically, uh, uh, there'll be two components. What's called bipartite uh, entanglements. Um, uh, and, and quite often, what's done is you, you take a system, you divide it to, let's say, a left side and a right side. And now let's imagine you consider uh, a, some particular quantum state psi, and you form the projector onto this state of psi, and it's the ket of bra. And uh, so if, if uh, psi is the ground state, this is the zero temperature density matrix of your, uh, of your system. And um, now you trace out over all the degrees of freedom on the, on the, the uh, B component. And you form what's called the reduced density matrix, row A. Now this guy uh, is, uh, is is normalized to, to trace over the A degrees of freedom of row A is equal to uh, one. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, um, although it's normalized, it's no longer necessarily a, a pure state. For pure states like this is a projector, the uh, eigenvalues are always uh, zero, and uh, and then there's one eigenvalue one. But uh, here, the eigenvalues are, not, no longer, are no longer just 0 and 1. And you could, uh, by uh, computing minus trace row log row, you find the entanglement entropy. This is a concept going back to von Neumann in the 50s. Um, and just a sort of a touchstone, if you have like a classical state, a product state, psi A tensor psi B, if you computed the reduced density matrix, you, when you traced out over the B degrees of freedom, assuming these are normalized states, you would just basically eliminate the psi b, your, your, your reduced density matrix would, would still be pure. And you would have uh, zero entanglement entropy, which makes good intuitive sense. Now, to understand what's really uh, going on here, um, basically, mathematically, all we have to understand is something about Schmidt decomposition. So what is Schmidt decomposition? Um, so um, <laughs> Schmidt decomposition <laughs> is the following. Um, so if we, if we write uh, uh, our, our, you know, general state in in, 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 this, uh, in this way, 
um, as uh, expanding it in terms of orthonormal bases on the left and the right. And the dimensions here, uh, you know, NA and NB don't have to be the same. In general, they won't be. Then there is some, uh, s some uh, rectangular matrix uh, psi, um, which uh, matrix of coefficients here. Uh, the singular value decomposition theorem, which I, I learned about from Wikipedia, um, it, it says that, uh, that, that you can write this uh, as, a, as a product of uh, two uh, oblong um, uh, unitary matrices, what that means I'll say in a second, and then uh, in the middle here is a uh, diagonal matrix uh, um, uh, with non-negative real entries. So uh, u dagger u and v dagger v um, are, are both uh, uh, identity matrix where n, n sub s, the number of singular values, uh, is uh, less than or equal to the maximum of, uh, or the minimum of uh, uh, n a and, uh, and b. And, um, and so the, the, the uh, L, L entries here are all non-negative real numbers. Any phases or signs you know, go into the u's and the v's. And so... Uh, given that, you can now uh, write this state in the following way. If I take uh, psi and I apply this SVD, uh, and then I uh, redefine uh, these uh, basis states here, um, the, uh, then what, what happens is uh, we have a sort of a diagonalized version here of, of rho sub a, where the uh, coefficients are e to the minus psi. This sum p runs over the number of uh, singular values. And um, when, when you uh, take a look at the uh, uh, eigenspectrum uh, for a product state, you will have exactly one state in the spectrum. Uh, n sub s will be equal to 1, and psi uh, will be equal to 0. And so here's the, the entanglement spectrum for a, a product state. And for a generic state, you should expect you know, stuff like this, you know, uh, generic spectrum, a whole bunch of these numbers. And the only thing that, uh, that we know about them a priori is that the, they're normalized, so the sum of these values is equal to uh, 1, and uh, the entanglement entropy uh, minus trace rho log rho is this uh, weighted sum of, the, of, the, of these eigenvalues. Okay, so you know, if you took two spins, for example, and, and, I, and I made a, a state uh, cosine theta over 2 up down plus sine theta over 2 e to the i phi down up, and you compute the uh, reduced density matrix for you know, one of them. Um, then you find that, in general, unless this angle is, uh, is, is 0 or pi, that, that, the, the, uh, uh, that, that this is no longer a you know, pure state. Um, and you find the entanglement entropy as, as a function of you know, cosine theta as a maximum of theta equals 0 you know, anywhere uh, uh, along the equator uh, of the uh, block sphere, uh, not just for the singlet state, but for all values of phi along the equator. Um, and um, the, uh, the, if you look at the entanglement spectrum, uh, then you know, at, when, when you know, cos theta is equal to 0, then it's you know, doubly degenerate, um, where, where the, the both eigenvalues are log 2. And uh, then uh, you know, in general values of theta, you have you know, something like this. Um, you could compute um, you know, for two spin s objects forming a, a singlet what the uh, reduced density matrix is, um, and the entanglement entropy in, in, in that case. So for a you know, spin a half, the entanglement entropy is, of course, uh, log 2. Uh, for a singlet composed of two <coughs> spin s objects, it's this. So these calculations are useful to go through just to, to you know, sort of touch, touch base a bit. Um, you know, a slightly more interesting case is if you take an interacting model, uh, let's say this uh, spin 1 uh, valence bond solid chain of, of uh, Affleck Kennedy Liebman Tasaki from uh, the, the 1987-88. So this uh, this model is, uh, is special because this interaction here is really related to a projection operator, so that um, every every link of this uh, chain has the maximum total spin of one. So even though the individual spins are spin one, you think when you add together spin two spin ones, I should get spin zero, one, and two. But what's special about this guy? is that there's only spin 1. And, and the way AKLT envisioned it is you can imagine the spin 1 formed by two spin halves, uh, uh, these two blue dots, and then the yellow circle is the, the symmetrizer uh, that selects out only the spin 1 through the symmetric subspace from the, 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 uh, the uh, uh, four, uh, you know, right, four, you know, spin a half, uh, uh, you know, two spin a half, uh, you know, uh, Hilbert space. 
And um, so, uh, and then you form these uh, singlets between uh, consecutive spin and a half guys, and this describes a spin one chain. Now, if you uh, if we you know cut it, uh, then what what happens is at the end, uh, this poor little you know spin a half at the end you know is lost to his friend, and um, and so there are now you know, two you know many body states which which I could write mm -hmm. like this, um, uh, up and down depending on what you know mu is, and those will exactly be the uh, the, the eigen states of of rho sub a. And they happen also to be the, the edge states of the spin one AKLT chain. Um, generally, that's not the case that the eigenstates of the reduced density matrix are exactly equal to the, the edge states uh, for the, uh, you know, the, you know, uh, the Hamiltonian, the energy you know, eigenstates in a, in, a, in a system with an edge. But uh, for this particular simple case, uh, it is. Um, and uh, in, in this case, it, then when you compute the entanglement uh, entropy, you get log two. It's exactly like just cutting a singlet, because in fact you are just cutting one of these singlet links, and everything else on this side is uh, only connected with states on, on the, uh, the, the A sector in the left half, and so it's not entangled with anything on the right, so we don't have to worry about it. So it's yes. So the uh, everything to the left of the red yeah. dot is system A, and yes. there's imaginary yeah. system B on yeah. the right side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So this was A on the left, and B on the right. I got rid of I got rid of B, uh, and, uh, and and this is A, and that's it. Okay. Um, and you can do this for a general, you know, uh, integer uh, spin, you know, AKLT chain. There's a whole family of these types of states um, uh, where basically you're you know, pictorially represented like this, where I have you know, uh, uh, S of these valence bonds, where S is an integer. And then when, when you cut this, you can work out a, a reduced density matrix. It's a rather easy thing to do. And you find that the entanglement entropy is log of S plus 1. Remember, for the, the, if I took two spin S's and made a singlet, it would be log of 2S plus 1. But in these chains, because half of the singlet, half of these bonds go to the right and half go to the left, when I cut here, the, the entanglement entropy is only log of S plus 1. So that, uh, very simple to do. Uh, I hope it's at least superficially so you know, plausible. Yeah. Before you move on. Yeah. So the this log two means I should uh, I have a free hanging spin. That's yes. A, yes. Exactly. And in fact, these are seen experimentally in 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 in, in uh, you know uh, various spin one compounds like uh, uh, NEMP. With, you know the, the exact the detailed uh, name I won't remember, but maybe Terry does. <laughs> but uh, you know you can actually see from spin resonance that when you put in you dope, uh, you know, the, the, the spin one chains typically have nickel with some non-magnetic, you know, divalent ion like, let's say, calcium. You break the you break the chain, and you have little free spin halves at the end of spin one chains. That was first noticed numerically by Tom Kennedy in some uh, in, in, in uh, numerical uh, studies of the Heisenberg <coughs> model, the spin one Heisenberg model, uh, in, in the late in, in 1990, and then uh, the nice work by uh, Affleck and Halpern and others. And, Experimentalists and, you know, saw this, so it's uh, it's real. And then you know the, these AKLT states happen to be uh, very simple, uh, sort of the simplest examples of uh, matrix product states in one dimension and tensor network states in in, in 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 higher dimensions. And here, you know, if you made a cut here, you would find that you would have an entanglement entropy which would be proportional to the to the uh, you know the length of this cut. And so you you can uh, uh, it's it, you know for, for these states it's simple to compute. The, uh, uh, the entanglement entropy and the, the, the entanglement uh, 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 you know, uh, spectrum. Um, so uh, that's for Aoki. Um, so, uh, um, so uh, um, all right. So let me just uh, I want to review a few uh, major results. Uh, there was a, 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 a review earlier this year. Um, so. Uh, uh, for free bosons, actually, you know, th th this goes back to uh, uh, some work in the early 90s by Srednicki, and I'm told there's an earlier uh, uh, paper in, in the 80s by Bongelli et al. Mark Srednicki uh, uh, <laughs> was interested in, in uh, the, the hawking beckenstein entropy of black holes, um, which is proportional to their area rather than their volume, and he was you know, trying to, to understand if, if there's some connection between that and the following problem, and he said, well, let's, let's imagine we have our universe and, and we have a black hole of radius r, and the region b is inside the black hole, 
but because it's inside the black hole, we can't know anything about it. And so uh, trace out, you know, compute the density matrix for a, you know, a, a free bosonic you know, scalar field, uh, trace out over the, the, the degrees of freedom inside the black hole, and, 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 and now compute the uh, entropy for the, the resulting reduced density matrix. And he found that the, the, uh, that the entanglement entropy goes as the, uh, uh, the, the, the surface area, R squared in three dimensions, R in two dimensions, you, know, you need an ultraviolet cutoff, and then in, in one dimension, you, you, uh, you need actually infrared cutoff, and then, then you, get a, you get a log. Um, there have been a lot of uh, very nice results using conformal uh, field theory. Um, you know, uh, Eddie probably knows this uh, better than uh, anyone here. Um, so there's a beautiful work going back to uh, Holgi, Larson, and Wilczek in the mid-90s when they, they computed the uh, uh, entanglement entropy. Uh, you have a, you have a, a, a conformal uh, you know, field theory on, on, a, on a circle. You, you take a region A, you make these two cuts. You find that the entanglement entropy goes like uh, goes logarithmic, as Sir Nicky found, with the, the length of the region A. Little little a is 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 is, is then uh, the uh, um, this uh, ultraviolet cutoff. Uh, C is the central charge of the conformal field theory, um, and so you, you learn something about the, the the CFT by computing the entanglement entropy. Um, uh, Calabresi and Cardi uh, uh, revisited this, looked at what happens also on, on, on uh, uh, finite chains. There they found that, you know, no surprise when you have one cut rather than two, you get uh, half of the uh, Holzi and all results. There, then you also get contributions due to the, the, the boundary entropy at the ends. Uh, uh, and, uh, yeah? I'm confused about the first result. Do you get something Sorry, when A and B. So when the region A is half of the circle, then it starts to go down suddenly. I, I mean, yeah, it should go, it should go like the you know the the it go uh, like some the, sign instead of. Oh, what happened? Yeah, I mean, it should be you know you know should be a yeah, periodic with that. That's right. Yeah. So this is here. We're assuming that L is very is very is, small. is small compared to the the total like size the of the ring. The yeah. The, yeah. So uh, right. Yeah. Um, uh, and then you know, off criticality, uh, the, the, you, you, you get uh, you, 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 uh, you get that result with the uh, L's replaced yeah, by the correlation length. Can you go back for a second? Yeah. Uh, the very first one, this one, the A and B tracing out on the on the black hole. Yeah. So the so like when you look at the AKLD, but at least you know Hamiltonian, you know basically on both systems something, right? So here is the assumption, you know, you have a Hamiltonian for the full system, for the full spin system. Yeah. You can trace out the half of it or whatever you want to do. Yeah. But the logic here that whatever happens in region B should have been to some kind of like the same bosonic theory. How you can trace it without knowing what's going on inside. Oh, no, it, it, it is. It's one boson. It's, you know, just okay. H is the integral of grad phi squared. That's it. This is, okay. not, really, this is not really the black hole. No, it's, it's not. No, this, is, this was sort of a, you know, sort of a... Sort of mock up. It's a uh, convenient uh, black hole. Yeah. <laughs> this is not a real yeah, black hole. This is just a uh, flat space. But can you maybe remind us? So, in all these examples, entanglement entropy scales as one power less than dimensional. Yeah, I'm going to. Uh, yeah, I'm going to. Uh, okay, well, well, I'm, I'm gonna, well, okay, ask your question after, uh, after the space here is filled. Okay. Uh, and, and, uh, uh, so, for free fermions, um, you know, there's some beautiful work of uh, Ingo Peschel uh, about 10 years ago, uh, and then you know, uh, others. Uh, basic idea is you can transform to an A, a B basis for the occupied states um, if the if there is a uh, uh, you know conserved uh, you know uh, you know translation variance if there's a conserved quantum number in, in the direction along this this cut all the all the states can actually be uh, classified by this momentum as well. Uh, and then, you know, in, in, in doing so, you can write the reduced density matrix uh, in, in the following form as the exponential of minus uh, uh, some operator, which is called the entanglement uh, Hamiltonian, the eigenvalues of which basically uh, you know, tell you, um, uh, depending on whether they, they're you know, negative or positive, whether, you're, whether the states are living on the A half or, or the B half. I'll mention more about this later. Um, but uh, what you find you know, numerically is that for fermionic systems, if you have a finite area of Fermi surface, you get this L to the d minus 1 uh, that you know, Srednicki found. But then there's an extra log 
<coughs> from the Fermi surface. And if you have a point Fermi surface, let's say like in, in graphene, then you lose the log. Um, the, uh, uh, and, and this is all related to some you know, conjectures. Uh, the, uh, there's a nice recent paper just a couple of months ago by Brian Swingle, maybe even this last month. Uh, so he was looking, he had this argument, well, if you compute the entanglement entropy at some scale lambda for some bosonic system, then uh, you know, if your, your, your Hamiltonian is coarse grained at some scale lambda, then, then basically you, you should just get uh, uh, something proportional to the, the, this, uh, uh, this area. Uh, uh, and uh, if you integrate this up uh, from uh, your ultraviolet to some infrared cutoff, then you recover the, uh, the, you know, the, the you know, previous result that goes like L to the D minus 1 uh, in, in uh, uh, you know, D dimensions if D is greater than 1. And you get the, you know, this logarithmic uh, result in, in one dimension. Uh, and, and where, where uh, so, so this is true you know, whether or not the theory is critical. In one dimension, if it's you know, critical, then the ultraviolet cutoff is, is L. If it's, uh, if, if it's off criticality, then, then it's, it's the correlation length. And then you, get, you, you get different results. Yeah. Um, and yeah. All these results hold if you assume that the psi, the yeah. total wave function is pure. Let's assume it's not the pure state. Yeah. Would, would those results hold or they'll change? Uh, yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll change. So there are generalizations of this to finite temperature uh, also. But I'm not going to talk no, about I'm curious how they will change. For example, we will have the proportionality to the area or not anymore, or that it's lost. <coughs> Um, for, yeah. Uh, so the uh, um, yeah, I think you know you get you then start to get a, a, a proportionality to to to, to, uh, to volume when you have the, the finite temperature. Um, so that will happen, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah I have okay. To, okay. But I have to, but okay. Ask me. Maybe you should ask me afterwards. So I can think okay. more about it because I I, uh, I don't I don't recall particular. Although here uh, for the fermions, they, they're, they're, there's a there's an actual formula in there. Um, so there's something called the Widom conjecture for fermions, which basically you know, says this, that the entanglement entropy should, you know, if you have some region in, in real space, we in integrate you know, over the, you know, the, this, uh, the uh, area, the, cross, you know, the, the, uh, the region, uh, the boundary of, of, of your, uh, you know, uh, the region you're tracing out. And then you integrate out over the Fermi surface. And these are two unit vectors you know, uh, uh, that are orthogonal to uh, this, the real space surface and the Fermi surface uh, integrate this, and the, the conjecture due to Widom, this comes from you know, some completely other field from the early 80s, um, is, is that the, the entanglement entropy should, should uh, go as uh, log L times this. And numerically, this seems uh, to be uh, fairly well confirmed uh, in, in various systems where people have looked. Um, there are generalizations of this also to finite temperature. Uh, another recent paper by, by Brian Swingle. Um, but uh, I don't think any, uh, none of this is really you know, proven. Um, but it's consistent with what, what is known, uh, both numerically and, and, and from you know, exact studies. Um, then uh, people have looked at uh, various uh, topically, topological, topologically ordered uh, systems in, uh, say, two dimensions. Um, there, you know, uh, what you find is that, again, the entanglement entropy goes uh, as, as the L to the D minus 1. There's a linear term. But then there's a universal uh, uh, subleading contribution, which uh, tells you something about the nature of this topologically ordered state. And I'll, I'll mention a little bit more about this uh, later on. It, so it's, it's, it's hard to actually compute this because... Numerically, you, you have to you know, get rid of this leading term. And uh, you know, experts like uh, Nicolas Mignon, who you know, does this for quantum Hall systems, you know, are, are, are able to actually uh, extract this. But it's, it's a tricky business. Um, so, and there have been various uh, you know, applications to different uh, you know, topologically ordered uh, condensed matter systems. Um, OK, so what can I wanted to yeah. ask my question. Oh, okay, okay, yes, sir. sorry, yes. <laughs> uh, in all of the examples you told us, entropy goes as the size to the power of less by one in dimensionality, yeah, and you yeah, might yeah. get an extra logarithm if you have sufficient number of gapless excitations. Yeah, 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 like yeah. But other examples where it goes as a volume, where it never happens. 
Um, I, for, for if you start out with a pure system, I, yeah, I don't, I, you know, I, I think what you will, um, uh, you know, the, it would be a very odd, a very odd uh, system to, to, you know, to, to, to have that. I mean, I don't know of any actual models. So no, is the volume in three dimensions or volume? No, it goes to L to the d minus one is what he's asking. Does it does it ever go like L to the d? You know, something greater than L to the d minus one. And I don't know of any models. There is a theorem that. Uh, Generically, cannot it can only happen in a very isolated point in low parameter space. The local uh, ground states of local Hamiltonian space essentially yeah. never have this problem. Yeah, I think uh, you know uh, Matt Hastings has some counter examples of of, of, uh, of local Hamiltonian. Not with local Hamiltonian. Yeah, but you mean yeah. non-local yeah. Hamiltonian. Yeah. Um. So uh, yeah, sorry, I. I skipped over your question, but you know, as in ice skating, our, our safety is in our speed. So. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, so I wanted to talk more about entanglement spectra. Um, so, you know, the, the you know, philosophy here is that you know, entanglement entropy uh, may be <coughs> useful and interesting, but it's still a, a single number, and obviously a more detailed picture would be provided by the entanglement spectrum, which is a, a set of these uh, guys, psi, uh, so P, re remember those are the eigen the eigenvalues of the reduced density matrix are uh, e to the minus psi. Uh, so I just wanted to mention some recent developments and then get down to talking about some of the stuff we were doing on, on spin chains. So you know, one thing, if you know, if the ground state you know transforms to some you know group representation, you know, so uh, th then <coughs> typically uh, you know th then you know this is the case, let's say for spin systems, um, you know, where you have so you have a singlet ground state for an antiferromagnet, you can label the entanglement levels by, by group representations. And so, for example, for, uh, if you have a, an antiferromagnet with an SU2 symmetry and a spin zero ground state, then the, um, the, 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 the state can be written, because it is a singlet, we have to, you know, uh, the, the, the states on, on the A and the, the B sectors here, they uh, uh, can be classified by total spin S, and then we have to add them up with these, you know, magic uh, Clubs-Gordon coefficients to make a singlet. Um, so the in this case the entanglement spectrum can be resolved into uh, 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 different uh, you know, blocks according to the total spin. And uh, if you uh, so you know, for example, if we look at the spin one AKLT chain, as I mentioned, the the uh, entanglement spectrum looks uh, looks like the following. You have two degenerate levels here. At, uh, uh, at, at log two, corresponding to spin spin one half. Um, but in general, if you looked at what happened, if I start to move away from the from the uh, uh, you know uh, from the uh, uh, special point where the AKLT state is exact, <coughs> then you know what happens. As in you know in my life in general, is you know shit rains down from above. You know and 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 and, and you know you see all this stuff coming down. And these levels collapsing from uh, positive affinity, and these guys have to you know, move up a little bit to satisfy the sum rule. And what you see is, is other multiplets, spin three halves, spin one half. In fact, you'll always see even full degenerate multiplets for uh, reasons I'll, 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 I'll mention shortly. Um, but, and this will be important for uh, what I'm going to mention later, what one finds is that, that there's an entanglement gap which remains finite in the thermodynamic limit throughout, let's say, the Haldane phase of the, of the spin one of the spin one chain, and, and so here's some uh, you know, uh, you know, data from uh, uh, Ronnie uh, Tamale. Here's here's the AKLT state uh, over here, and here you see the the, the, the two uh, degenerate uh, spin a half guys you know, spin the you know, plus, you know, plus or minus a half. And now uh, when we move uh, the, the magic you know, ratio of the coefficients uh, bilinear to biquadratic is one third. So here is something that's not quite one third, and now we start to see this quadruplet coming down. Uh, and then uh, still uh, further from uh, one third, we see uh, another quadruplet and a, and a doublet coming down, and uh, et cetera. And again, all even full degenerate. The, the reason they're all even full degenerate in this case, and, and still there's always this uh, entanglement gap here. Uh, the reason they're even full degenerate is that you know, you know you start here's the AKLT ground state. Now away from the AKLT point, um, you know if you did say just perturbation theory, you'd start to add mix in other states that would look like this. But they'll always 
But you can always represent all the stuff you add mix in by these, these, these little sketches with, uh, with, with singlet bars. <coughs> and now you can see that basically no matter what you do, uh, you're always going to cut an odd number of these lines. And so when I cut an odd number, then I'll have you know, an odd number of uh, spin a halves left over. And so that means that the, the multiplets that, that you'll, you'll see raining down you know, from uh, uh, infin infinite entanglement uh, uh, eigenvalue are, are, are always going to be uh, odd s, uh, half odd integer s. Um, this uh, uh, is related to the you know, topological protection of the, the edge states in, in the energy spectrum of these systems. Uh, uh, the AKLT chain, the, 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 the integer spin chains for odd s. For even s, it turns out that you know, if you know, you, you might think that at the edge of a spin two chain that you have a spin one uh, uh, edge state, but in fact you can by sort of rewiring it that you could passivate these two, uh, the, the spin one state at the end, and then you get a, a spin zero state. So for for spin two, you should expect that um, you will only have. Uh, um, uh, you know, integer s states in your spectrum, but you could you could then you don't necessarily preserve the the, the, the edge states. You could have a you know, spin zero at the edge as well. So there's some nice work on this by uh, uh, Frank Pullman and, and uh, uh, Osaki Ishikawa and others in, in recent years. <coughs> um, so one thing, as you might expect, people would, might look at is the eigenvalue uh, distribution, um, and uh, so. Here you just um, you know, look at the, uh, uh, the, the, the density of eigenvalues. And so in the uh, scaling regime, this, this can be reconstructed from moments of the reduced density matrix. Uh, if, if I know the trace of, of you know, rho, the reduced density matrix, to some power alpha, and uh, you know, then you can, from the knowledge of these moments, you can try to reconstruct the entire distribution. Um, and you know these things are computed by the replica trick. So computing computing this to you know this to the power alpha is also a natural for the replica trick. And what one finds is generally that that, that, that these moments have the following form. The, the um, at criticality they would go like you know L the the uh, size of your uh, uh, your region to the to the minus uh, uh, you know C. This is the Central charge times this uh, this quantity alpha uh, minus alpha inverse over six, um, and uh, and then there's a non-universal prefactor here, um, and so uh, the um, so in this case uh, you know you can you can ask well you know does this actually work, and so this was some nice you know work by Calabresi and the Fev just a couple of years ago so. They they tried to compare the predictions of this of, 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 of what, what you get here with the eigenvalue distribution to what you find in the x y chain and they basically found uh, you know fairly good agreement with exact numerical results which suggested that these non-universal effects here are are small. Where, where, uh, where did the criticality come from? Sorry, the criticality you said close to the criticality. Where, where is that? Well, so here they're they're looking at a at a you know at a, at a gapless system. Okay. Uh -huh. um, so if it's not gapless, then 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 then, uh, uh, then you have to replace this by the correlation. Um, but that's not specific for X Y chain or for any conformal Well, here let me just show. Uh, so the, 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 you know, uh, Pullman and and, and uh, Joel Moore. Is Joel here? Uh, he's uh, he's coming. I think tomorrow. Ah, okay. Well, he's so, staying close for. Uh, okay. So so so, um, uh, so you know they looked at some other models. Let's say the transverse Ising model. Um, they, they looked at you know, the, the, you know so they looked at X Y the, the Heisenberg model the, this uh, <coughs> uh, spin one model uh, at the, the uh, uh, with, with the uh, bilinear and biquadratic exchange but at the special you know, this, you know, uh, uh, you know, fixed and at this uh, critical point uh, that was you know, uh, looked at by uh, Taktajan and Guizhen years ago um, and, uh, and the uh, uh, transverse Ising model. And so what they could do is, is, is they could, um, uh, they found that close to the you know, critical point, the eigenvalue distributions did agree well with the, this result from Calabresi and the FEV. That suggested the non-universal effects are again small. Um, and, but what they, 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 they did is better, but they could, by detailed analysis, they're actually able to back out the, the value of this, this non-universal thing that you were, you were asking about. So for, for, you could see that actually there is 
there is a difference, you know, for different, you know, for 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 for, for different uh, um, uh, you know, critical theories, uh, that, that you know that you have uh, uh, you know a different uh, uh, value of C alpha. But again, you know, the, as, as, as C alpha versus alpha is sort of almost alpha, almost model independent, but uh, not quite. So, um, um, so the. The, 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 uh, this reconstructing the eigenvalue <coughs> distribution from the moments you know, gives an almost universal answer. Um, um, so um, topological phases. Uh, the um, so I mentioned you know, AKLT here, um, where you have this entanglement gap and these higher line, higher line multiplets. This th this gap. Predicts this doublet. This doublet is sort of a, a signature of uh, topological property of this Haldane phase. Um, and um, the, the uh, I don't know if going to talk anymore about that or he may touch on that. So uh, the um, uh, other uh, other examples. Let's say that you know the the uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, Majorana chain looked at by Kataya, which you know. Look to the, the transverse uh, XY model. Um, you, you have, uh, you know, for the transverse XY model, uh, in, in where the, uh, the exchange you know, dominates, you have a free Majorana at the end. That's equivalent to the topological phase where the field dominates. Uh, th then uh, you, you lose that, that Majorana at the end, and you, uh, the levels are only uh, you know, singly degenerate uh, over in the, in, the, uh, in the when you have the Majorana. The, Topological phase, it's all models are doubly degenerate. That's true in the energy spectrum. It's true in the entanglement spectrum, um, and uh, and um, and so you know you, you see this. This was you know looked at by Kitayev uh, 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 and numerically uh, uh, Fikowski. Uh, there are probably some other references I'm missing. Uh, the uh, in higher dimensions, as I mentioned earlier, you know the the momentum along the cut is a good quantum number. And then you can investigate the spectral flow of the entanglement levels uh, as a function of this transverse momentum. And so, you know, for example, for the, the quantum Hall effect, uh, so there's some nice work of uh, Rodriguez and uh, Sierra uh, a few years ago. So if you if you look for new equals one or new, new equals two, you can you can see uh, these topologically protected surface states that are interpolating across this uh, uh, entanglement gap. In, in this case, you know, with, 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 you know with, for new equals one, you have you know one edge state for new equals two. <coughs> there are two edge states. Um, you know, here for, for these values of of, of the of, of ky, um, you know, the, 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 the basically your Landau, you know, strip wave functions are are lying to the left, and for you know ky positive, they're lying to the right, and you can see how how the how you, you know, smoothly interpolate from one side to the other. So so. Uh, um, uh, so that's uh, you know, that, 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 that's uh, uh, instructive. Um, the, you can look at you know, other examples. The honeycomb lattice model, my student Patricia Wang was playing around with this. Um, you know, in the non-topological phase, if you if you look at the, uh, the you know the entanglement um, spectrum, uh, and, and, you know you, you look at these. Uh, uh, um, uh, occupation numbers for the entanglement Hamiltonian, you don't find any levels interpret, uh, interpolating across the gap, but in the in the topological phase, then then, then you do. Um, the uh, don't don't, you, not, don't pay attention to any of the colors there. That's an interesting detail. But um, uh, so the, the it's a you know, uh, sort of the you know, generic feature of, of these sorts of systems. <coughs> a more interesting application. Um, uh, you know, uh, due to Ari Turner and, and uh, Ashwin Vishwanath uh, uh, in Berkeley a couple of years ago. So they, they looked at this Fu King Malay model for a topological insulator. This is a, a model on a three dimensional lattice, on a diamond lattice, where you have um, uh, you know, different amplitude hoppings to, to your, 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 your different uh, you know, four nearest neighbors, and then there's some spin orbit uh, uh, piece. And what, what's interesting here is that. They, they find that if, they, if you compare the energy spectrum, the surface energy spectrum, with the uh, entanglement spectrum, you find that 
let's say for in the, ca in the case of a strong topological insulator, where you have uh, you know, uh, an odd number, in this case one you know, Dirac node on the surface, you find a Dirac node in both the energy and the entanglement spectrum. Um, and uh, you know, in the weak case, you have an even number. Uh, but now when you go to the, when you, when, so this model here has inversion and time reversal symmetry. If you break one of them, if you break time reversal, then you can gap out the energy spectrum, but the, the Dirac node remains in the, uh, in, in, the, uh, in the entanglement spectrum. And so what this tells you is that this, this phase here, where you've broken inversion, uh, where you've broken time reversal, where you have inversion, um, is, is not adiabatically continuable to a trivial band insulator, as is the case when you break both inversion and time reversal, and then you gapped out both the energy and the entanglement, entanglement spectrum. Uh, so, um, so this is a, you know, a, 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 a you know, sort of a non-trivial distinction uh, that you see in this model. Then can I ask a question? So in this case, how many uh, quantum numbers do you use? Is it two or one? Uh, in this in, in this case, it's a, a surface in the you know perpendicular to one one one, so and that goes for yeah, and, and for the energy spectrum. Yeah, yeah. I know about two. How many? Uh, so if it, if it was a plane, you yeah. could use the k per. Here it's it's k k in, in, in the plane. So it's okay. uh, and, and so it's it's it, at this point it's like graphene, you know, the, the, the uh, except that the it, it turns out that the direct nodes here are here at the these uh, end points. So you say you do break inversion? No, I'm saying if you break only time reversal and not inversion, it's clear yeah. that the theta term still has that the theta parameter still has to be quantized to be pi yeah. to zero. Yeah. Uh, so that's it's yeah. clear from the field theory that it should uh, should be from e dot b. Uh -huh. I think I think it's also true if you just break time if you if you, you just break, break inversion. inversion and not time reversal, it's the same thing. Yeah. 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 Because either breaks yeah. maybe both inversion and time groups. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that, that that is true. You know, whether whichever one of these I put the X on. That's right. Um, okay, so the, the work by Lee and Haldane where they first suggested when look at these entanglement uh, spectra uh, was on for the quantum hall effect. So you know, many of them <coughs> know the details of the quantum hall effect, so I won't, I won't, uh, I won't dwell on it. But you know, here you have this uh, they, they, they look on the sphere, uh, the single particle basis are these uh, orbitals that are you know, that, that uh, lying at different uh, latitudes on the sphere. And there, there's an actual partition into the northern and southern hemisphere. And um, the total particle number and the, the, the z component of the angular momentum, you still have an O2 symmetry if I slice it along the, the equator. So I can specify Lz and, and n in, both of the, in each of the partitions. Um, and one can classify the entanglement levels according to L, L Z, and, and, and N. And so the uh, um, so you know this is uh, uh, you know this is what uh, what one finds. In fact, they, they uh, Haldane and Lee looked at uh, Lee and Haldane looked at the uh, uh, new equals uh, five house case. Th these are results for uh, new equals a third by Bernavig, uh, Rignot, and Tamali. Uh, so um, what uh, what you see is that. Uh, if you start with the Laughlin state, and now here we'll look at the entanglement spectrum for now for fixed uh, uh, you know, partitioning of the particle numbers, seven in the northern and seven in the southern hemisphere, but now as a function of the angular momentum. So there's a, a there's a set of uh, as as you know, for, with the AKLT you can look at each value of S Z. What is the entanglement spectrum here for each value of L Z? You can ask what is the entanglement spectrum. And you know you see uh, the, this fuzz of, of these levels, but it turns out that there's uh, there, 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 there's some important physics here. Uh, in particular, if you look at the Laughlin state, you see uh, you know a, a, a tangent spectrum that looks like this. If you looked at at the, what would happen for the Coulomb ground state, you would see something that would look uh, quite a bit richer. 
But it turns out that these uh, levels here on the, uh, the, the very lowest lying entanglement levels would have the same sort of structure. And in, in particular, the counting of these levels, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, etc., would be the same. Um, the, uh, um, so uh, the, the, the edge state spectrum, uh, which is given by some you know, conformal uh, field theory, in this case, the you know, uh, k equals 1 uh, uh, Wesumino Witten model, this SU2 over 1 Wesumino Witten <coughs> model, uh, uh, you know, has a particular uh, uh, you know, uh, set of these uh, degeneracies. In, in Eddie's language, these would be the dimensions of the conformal blocks. Um, the, uh, but you can think about these just in terms of uh, you know, Wen's uh, theory of the edge states, the, the sort of U1 boson edge states for the quantum Hall effect. If I start with the Laughlin state, and then I can make uh, an L equals 1 excitation like this, I can make uh, L equals 2 excitations in, in either of the following ways, uh, L equals 3 excitations like so, uh, and proceeding like this, you know, but, uh, it's basically you just partition the total angular momentum into you know, different, uh, you know, uh, into these different you know, bosonic states, and, and um, the, the uh, you get this this, this counting. Um, Lee and Haldane looked at the nu equals five halves. There again, the, the if you look at the the more read state, which is sort of the pure state, um, the uh, you, you see something. If you look at the Coulomb state, you see you know a sort of a richer structure. There's more levels of, of, you know coming down from above again, and you see a different counting: you know, one, one, three, five. So uh, the, the low-lying portion of the entanglement spectrum uh, turns out to be universal, separated from these uh, remaining levels by some finite entanglement gap, about which I'll have more to say uh, presently. So here's this entanglement gap here, which seems to close up, but, but I'll say more about that. Um, this the Laughlin, or the more read state, is, uh, is pure, and it contains none of these non-universal higher-lying levels. Okay. So, now comes the, 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 the spin chain stuff. Um, so so the, the, um, if you look at these you know, gap spin chains, the entanglement spectrum, as I said, can reflect the edge state physics. You see that in, let's say, the uh, Majum Nervosh or the AKLT chains. If you look at gapless spin chains, there's been a sort of work on, on entanglement entropy and entanglement spectra, for example, uh, mm -hmm. as I showed you, the distribution of uh, eigenvalues. Um, uh, but uh, um, you know, we, we, were, we were looking at um, uh, you know, a different angle on the entanglement spectrum. Um, so the, you know, the canonical example is the spin half Heisenberg antiferromagnet. And um, so you know, the interesting thing here, as many of you know, is that you, know, you have the elementary excitations are not um, uh, you know, spin one spin waves, but you know, spin a half. Uh, spin ons sort of fractionalize out of, the, out, of a, you know, out of a single spin flip in, in, in this way. You can see that in, in say, the you know, SFQ and Omega, as Thierry was mentioning. Um, and uh, so the, the, the ground state is known from uh, beta ansatz. So we're interested in looking at the, you know, trying to understand you know, how to take the state apart, looking at the entanglement spectrum. So if, if you look at the, a real space bipartitioning, you get rather little in the way of any, any, uh, any structure. Um, but we found that if, if you Fourier transform the, 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 the ground state and, and you look at the, uh, at, at the wave function in, in, in Fourier space, and why this is the case, I'll mention shortly, um, then uh, a rather interesting structure uh, emerges. So basically, you, know, you take the, the ground state, um, the, you can start with a ferromagnetic state with all spins up. I have to flip half of them to down to make SD equals zero. And then there are these amplitudes, which uh, the you know, magic numbers here are you know, magic amplitudes make this a total spin singlet. And um, now we just you know, Fourier transform these operators and write down the wave function in, in, the, uh, in, in the Fourier basis. So when you do that, uh, you see something really uh, remarkable. Um, in this case, now uh, we can uh, specify the, the total you know, crystal momentum is a good quantum number. And so there, as a function of the crystal momentum, there seems to be a, uh, a complete entanglement gap, um, unlike the case of 
Lee and Haldane found for the quantum Hall effect, where the levels seem to run into each other at a particular value in the angular momentum. Here, you know, sort of clear across the Biron zone, you seem to have a full entanglement gap. And again, there's a, oopsie, there's a, uh, the, the, well now, you know, there's actually the, the, these numbers that you see, of these degeneracies, correspond exactly to what we have in the, uh, for, for the Laughlin state. And the counting of these levels, again, it's identical to the to that for the for the uh, for, for the Laughlin state. Let's say here for nu equals a half, you know, bosonic, uh, you know, uh, quantum Hall effect. Um, the uh, uh, and this effect of low energy theory, you know, the, 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 for the entanglement levels where you where you see these the the, the counting that corresponds to the the, uh, uh, the edge states for the, for, for, for Laughlin only emerges when you do this cut in momentum space and not in, not in real space. Um, the, uh, we looked at what happens when, um, when you add in a second neighbor interaction. So there's a, for, for this model here, when, when G is about a quarter, there's a cost of stylus transition to, a, to a, a, a spin pyros phase. And as you change G, uh, increasing uh, you know, from zero to uh, about a half, uh, this is sort of what you see. Um, the, these higher line entanglement levels, they first sort of shift up, and then they start to shift down. They seem to resolve into different you know, branches. Uh, and when you're at the Majumdar Gosh point, where, where G is equal to a half, uh, then the, this, is the, this is the spectrum. The spectrum is completely reorganized. Um, it, it turns out, uh, as was uh, you know, uh, you know, pointed out to us uh, by uh, Leon Balance, the, the reason that, that we, we see the, the entanglement gap start to increase as you go through the critical point is that the, at, at, at precisely there, the leading order corrections to the associated sign board model vanish. So the, there's some coefficient of some uh, you know, leading order relevant operator which is vanishing here. All this stuff here is due to uh, irrelevant operators. In some sense, this is this. We can think about these levels as arising from some some fixed point in the uh, in, you know, RG sense, and these from from uh, uh, irrelevant operators. So the the correspondence here, um, you know, the reason that this works out is is is, is understood in terms of the existence of the Haldane Shastri model, which is a many of you know an inverse square. Uh, uh, exchange, uh, spin half model. The ground state for the Holly Chastry model basically is the Laughlin state, and so for this model, one should expect you know to, to get the same results for the entanglement spectrum as you do for the Laughlin state, with one important difference, which simply has to do with the normalization of the single particle states. So, for example, for Holly Chastry, what you find is that here, here, are, here, here's the, the, uh, here are the entanglement levels for Hall and Shastri. The, the spread of these levels, notice the y-axis, is, is, is rather narrow. Whereas for Laughlin, they're spread out much more, okay, from say 0 to 14. Here, this goes from about you know, 2.6 to 3.1. And if we look at what happens when we start to add in, <coughs> uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, move away from the solvable point to add in some of these uh, irrelevant terms, here at the Heisenberg point, um, here are, here's all this stuff that's come down from infinity. All this stuff has now been compressed into this narrow band of levels down here. Um, and for, for new equals a half Laughlin, this is starting to come down uh, from above, and they're starting to merge for a you know, larger size system. I forgot to think this is 10 particles. They, they weren't quite touching. But for you know, larger systems, they'll, they'll start to merge, as we, we saw before. Um, so, uh, the, uh, uh, the, on the other hand, you know, here, in this case, you can actually you know, identify these levels uh, with, the, with, with those that you get from the Laughlin state. And you can see as you add in you know, the, the uh, uh, you know, other pseudo potentials that will take you away from the, 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 the point where the Laughlin state is exact, how these, how these levels start to drop down from infinity. Um, and, and, in, and in fact, Using the sort of spin chain version of the, the normalization of the single particle states, which essentially 
it amounts to taking the, the, the Wolfenstein on the sphere and sort of squeezing the particles so they lie in a band around the equator. Um, you, uh, uh, you, 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 by choosing the sort of the spin chain, uh, you know, the spin chain normalization, um, Tamale and, and, and uh, uh, collaborators found that you can see for the quantum Hall effect, you can, you can now very clearly distinguish the low-lying universal portion of the entanglement spectrum from the higher-lying non-universal portion. Uh, so here's, you know, let's say, nu equals a third. Um, you use the standard normalization where you, you sort of see all these levels merging together and using uh, this sort of geometry-free you know, normalization, uh, you, you, uh, you can you distinguish the, the uh, universal and the non-universal parts of the spectrum. And um, so they uh, proposed that, in fact, one could use this as a diagnostic of you know, uh, uh, quantum phase you know, here, uh, and, that, and that sometimes it gives you, you know, better results than just looking at overlaps alone. For example, here, um, for the uh, new equals half bosons, if you, you can interpolate between uh, a model uh, where, you, where you have this you know, three-body interaction for which the more read state uh, is, is exact, and you have, here's the, the, the universal, you know, more read results. And now, you, uh, so here's you know, the, the, the Fafian wave function. And now, as you move to a model where you just have pure two-body interactions, uh, then uh, you, you, you have brought down this crap from above. But, but still, the entanglement gap never collapses along this, uh, uh, along this trajectory. So that suggests that these, these limits are adiabatically connected. Um, so uh, well, you know, I should really you know, conclude. So um, th there is some you know, ongoing work now on spin one chains, so that the, the, uh, the you can define a spin one chain using this Fafian wave function, as has been done by uh, Ryder and Tamale. There's also some very nice recent work by uh, Herman Sierra and uh, Gafil Serac, uh, uh, you know, generalizing the, the uh, Haldane Shastri model. Um, so uh, this. Is a, an interesting model to, to look at uh, entanglement spectra for. Um, numerically, it's rather challenging to do this because I'm doing all the Fourier transforms. So I don't know if maybe Matthias could work a miracle. Uh, but uh, the, uh, so this is sort of uh, something which is occupying our attention uh, now. Uh, but I should just uh, conclude. We've gone on too long. So, uh, uh, so yeah, entanglement spectra. You know, provide a more detailed profile of the quantum ground state than entanglement entropy alone. Uh, real, state, real space partitions you know, reveal edge state properties um, through the uh, eigenvalue distributions and some details about the corresponding CFT. In one in dimensions greater than one, the, uh, you can examine the spectral flow of the entanglement levels uh, and, and that reveals some information about the topological nature of these systems. Um, and um, you know, finally, there's this sort of entanglement spectrum figure print that you see in the low line portion of the entanglement spectrum is universal, um, uh, in, in many cases related to a conformal field theory. The higher line levels are non-universal, and they vanish in these, uh, in these pure states. So uh, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> just a couple of minutes for some, sh some short questions. And then so is the idea that you use this as a diagnostic of your models? Yeah, I mean, it, so, yeah, I, I don't know of any, you know, experiment that could, could do this. So it sort of, you know, uh, you know more you know, tells us something about the nature of the, of the ground state. It's interesting in the, you know, in the case of the Heisenberg model that when you look at the low-line excitations, you're actually, in the low-line portion of the entanglement spectrum, tells you something about the bulk excitations rather than the, the, the edge excitations. But, because of this, that seems to be connect, you know, have something intimately to do with the proximity of the Haldane Shastri model. So, I'm not sure, quite, we're not quite sure how, how, how general that is, but, but um, the, uh, you know, the generosity of, of the bulk excitations for the, for the, for the you know, the Heisenberg model are, 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 are you know, recounted in the, in the edge, in, in the uh, low line entanglement spectrum. Um, so, uh, I mean, you know, of course, you know, for uh, it's not it's not surprising for a conformal field theory to find that you can 
get some information about the excitations hidden in the ground state correlation. Um, the the uh, persistence of the gap is somewhat, you know, that's a different story. But, but uh, uh, so, you know, the, the yeah, I mean, largely, you know, we're sort of looking at, you know, uh, you know seeing how uh, we can understand some details about the nature of these states and, and, and um, you know, the, I think this notion of an entanglement gap is, a, is, is, a, is an interesting, interesting one uh, that uh, you know, might you know, be used to classify states. Yeah, I, um, I wonder, so let's look at the spectrum of this. We have the spectrum before. And take the states which have size bigger than 5 or 10. I don't yeah. know. You, you choose the value. Okay. Remove them completely. Yeah. And use only the rest of the state to small advice and side to start again the new ground state, which is not exact. But I'm wondering physically how different that state would be from that one. Because I, I would suspect you see that those states with very high values yeah, so yeah, exactly. are just more exactly. 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 yeah. And yeah. the fact that there is a gap or not there, yeah. physically, I don't know if it's really of any consequence. <coughs> this is my question, really. Well, I think the gap certainly is there's certainly a consequence. I mean, in, you know, Which one, is? Well, I mean, in one dimensional system, you know, the gap collapses uh, concomitantly with no, the No, no, it has physical gap. properties, for example. You see, so look, I don't know. You choose. Well, some physical properties which you can measure. Can I see it in any, any measure? I, I don't know how to measure, physically measure a time of gap, but in one, in, for let's say, one dimensional system. No, but the consequence of the presence of that, can you measure that? Um, so, look at the quantity yeah. which will tell you that there is a gap or not. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I, I don't know what you can measure that would tell mm -hmm. you that there's an entanglement gap. Mm -hmm. um, the, what I'm saying is that's. Uh, in many systems, the entanglement gap and the uh, and, and energy gap would you know, collapse you know, concomitantly at a particular point. So they would, you know, the, 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 uh, the existence of the entanglement gap would also tell you, would also you know, tell you about a, you know, the, the, when there's a phase transition. Um, but as we saw in the case of the you know, where the, you know, Turner and, and the Dishwalker company showed that sometimes you can see the, the, the entanglement gap has not collapsed. When, well, uh, I, I, sometimes it, it, there's a, a node in the entanglement spectrum when you still have gaps in the, in the energy spectrum. And so it, it, uh, you know, in that case, I think it you know, told you something that you couldn't have necessarily inferred just from looking at the surf at least from the surface energy spectrum alone. Now, Mariana, I want to know here, but you told me yesterday when I asked about these things that if you look at other states like the quarter is hit in the quantum world state two fifth. Then it's not at all as clear that this gap is, is really <coughs> remaining. So a quarter of it. Um, so, so is it really? Uh, you know, it should. That's. Have, have you seen good cases? <laughs> Typical <laughs> case, yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, well, you know, I show it. I want to go you know, back and. Time. There's some you know, scaling of, of, the, of the gap for Heisenberg, at least with, with, with N. Okay. You know, um, the, I don't know about a quarter, actually. So, you know, for, um, but also a fifth, which is uh, a very good you know, experimental quantum all state, so it doesn't work there. Yeah, I, well, I, actually, I haven't seen the data at, at, a, uh, at, at a fifth. Um, so, yeah. Because it Calibre. relates to the earlier question of yeah. what the really means. means. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, well, you know, the, the uh, you know, from the point of view of the Laughlin states, you know, uh, you should expect the at fifth, you should expect the same <coughs> counting at, as as you have at at equals you know half or a third for any any Laughlin state, you know, not more read, but for any Laughlin state. What will be different is the finite size corrections will definitely be different. Uh, now you're asking whether the entanglement gap, you know, how, how that. How, how that's actually scaling with system size, and um, uh, I, I no no not the system size with uh, with m one third one fifth oh with m no. ah yeah I don't have that, 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 that's, that's the point yeah. mean, does it work for does it work for, for the well observed you know well understood quantum all space 
Well, my understanding is that when you when you use this um, you know, geometry tree normalization, that yeah, that you, you disentangle the higher higher levels quite well. But I haven't I haven't actually seen data for for one fifth. So uh, uh, as I showed, you know, for even for one third, you start you start to see the levels merge into each other, and then it's hard to hard to pick pick. pick yeah, but in third, it's clear. It's a clear yeah. Yeah, but only for part of the angular momentum spectrum. Okay. But when you use this, you know, this, the other normalization, you, you, you completely pick apart the, 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 the low lying and the, the non universal part of the spectrum. So I, I, I don't know of a case where that fails, but I haven't seen the data where it's in, in for a fifth. So. <coughs> presence or the absence of the gap may actually depend on the basics of the initial partition. Oh, absolutely, yeah. The, the, the entanglement spectrum certainly depends on, on, your, on, on how you do the partitioning. Right? And <clears throat> if you do a, uh, you know, a real space partition, you don't, you know, um, well, then, you, know, then you, you don't want the crystal lamp or the quantum number and, and so totally different. So, so here, no, yeah. There's no more gap between yeah. in that case. Yeah, no, in fact, there, there doesn't appear to be a, a, you know, a gap. It's a continuous you know, distribution. Uh, so you're here rather than partitioning between left and right, we're partitioning between left movers and right movers. That's the distinction. So now, uh, since our next talk uh, starts at 2.30, so we should take off for lunch. Uh, and it's not safe to leave computers here, so let's go to Gaudita and then we will go back uh, there and we'll just take off for lunch for Gaudita because it's good for